Welcome to my channel. And today I wanted to uh, go over with you uh, the install that we did uh, with this boiler uh, 2013. This is a uh, Columbia boiler. Um, it's originally designed to fire oil, um, but it was approved uh, to uh, run a gas. And we uh, decided to offer the customer the option of a gas-powered burner in place of the oil uh, to um, allow for fuel flexibility. While you do have much more complexity with the power burner, you uh, add noise, of course, you then have some fuel flexibility is that uh, whatever comes through that pipe there, uh, we can adjust. Um, we have a lot more control of the uh, air and with the uh, barometric, we have a lot more uh, control of the uh, uh, draft. Uh, the chimney, by the way, the relining was a pain in the butt for the chimney sweep. They had to do a, an awful lot to, to get that done, but it's done and there it is, relined. Um, the other reason why we chose the Columbia boiler was that at the time they were offering basement service and that was a big plus for us because the only way to get the boiler in was uh, through that window down a window well. That was a bit of a challenge, but it's done. Here it is. Of course, we've got it mounted on blocks. I wanted to mention that. So I think we've dealt with the um, burner now. I think I made an earlier um, video describing uh, how a, a power surge uh, burned out the old primary. And so we got a new primary there, burned out the low water cutoff. Uh, and so it's got a new cutoff and, and burned out the VXT. So it's got a new VXT. Um, so with uh, a typical steam boiler, uh, there's our sight glass, uh, top and bottom uh, shutoffs, and there's our uh, usual signature dish, the... Um, Sight glass drain valve uh, to keep this uh, reasonably clean. Power switch here is your 30 pound gauge. And because this is a two pipe steam system, um, we have a vapor stat. Uh, this is one of the, um, I mean, one of the few times uh, that when we first uh, got, had to get away from the mercury because they no longer were making them and they were becoming hard to find. Um, We've got this one set to as low as it can possibly go, uh, four ounces. And there's our low pressure gauge to uh, keep track of such things. Uh, that's a gas barometric, which is double swing and has the uh, blocked flue switch there, which is wired in uh, to the uh, safety circuit here, actually. Uh, you can usually uh, wire it here, but we got it out here for testing. All right, it's so moving on. There's our uh, safety relief valve. Uh, that is one when we did not use the uh, disconnecting union like I've had in other videos. This has got a regular sweat uh, male adapter. Uh, so you need a torch to get that out. Sorry about that. And as I said, this is a uh, low uh, pressure two pipe steam, uh, steam system that was put in probably sometime around 1907. And it's a type of system which is called a Brumel. And the Brumel we, um, generally likes to run at about three ounces. Um, but it's a highly modified Brumel now. So it can run at probably a little higher pressure, but <laughs> six ounces. So you have two outlets here. Now, typical Columbia Dunkirk uh, style uh, boilers like to come out the side, but uh, this one is nice because it comes out the top. Uh, now it's two inches. Uh, both uh, were used because of, we wanted the, the driest steam possible. And we used uh, the drop header with a uh, drop header that some of you may, may not know uh, requires two extra 90s and uh, two extra nipples to uh, allow the steam to come in at the top and any water then runs down the bottom 
and runs through uh, this three lovely three inch header, which is, I believe we oversized. The instructions allow for two and a half, but again, we, we, we went the extra for this one uh, because of the vapor. Uh, we even use cast iron fittings in some cases, but as I've said before, cast iron fittings are not uh, uh, all they're cracked up to be. So we've got a 90 here, and then we got our takeoff is three inch, and then uh, continues on and goes to essentially the header drip or so-called equalizer line. Uh, there's the Harford loop for the return. We'll get to that later. And then this pipe continues on. Now, usually now I would have done this in, in steel, but at the time I was still um, in my world of copper. Um, is we're below, we're at or below the water line, um, and no steam is down in this area. There shouldn't be a problem. Um, there might be a little uh, corrosion uh, back there, and that's an extra heavy nipple. If I remember, and we've got a uh, drain which is somewhat difficult to get to, and you can probably use that to uh, flush across the bottom of the boiler. But that's the return. That's pretty much the only wet return. Uh, right, that little section there, because there is, the Brumel really didn't uh, want you to go through that. So let's follow the steam again. Um, we're coming up here, we're going across, and then we're coming down to this T. So the steam is coming here. Uh, any water in this area is then directed to this drip. And the drip is then sent down there to the <laughs> less than one foot wet return and, and back to the aforementioned Harford loop. So the driest steam possible can be sent on this counterflow main. It's a very large three inch main. And as you can see, it goes along through there and back into the basement. Um, so the steam is moving in that direction. The air is moving in that direction, and we've got a, a Gorton uh, tree in the back to uh, let the air out as quickly as possible and the lowest pressure possible. And then this is the um, dry return coming back from the radiators through various areas. The air uh, for the dry return runs through and comes out this vent, which really doesn't have much to do because there shouldn't be any steam in this dry return. Um, we did have a flooding issue. We can get into that later. Uh, as you can see, the, the stains. Uh, but pretty much this thing is just standing guard against uh, any steam that might get into this dry return. Should the pressure get that high or the system run for a long time. Um, we had an issue where the valve here and the old valve that was here was passing. Uh, so this was replaced uh, with a ProPress, so there'd be no um, likelihood of overheating the valve and causing it to fail. Um, this one is uh, uh, proving to be tight. And then we, of course, we've got a, the VXT was uh, rebuilt back, uh, back when all this started. The water then goes through. The, this is the dry return drip right there yep and boom back through the our our friend the harford loop so the, when this thing was put in harford loop hadn't really been invented yet um and so this is probably one of the first harford loops that this system has ever seen um harford loop is somewhat controversial in some circles but it's required by code, so there it goes. Uh, let's see. I think that just about covers it. Of course, um, this is insulated. Some of this is left open to allow some warmth for the basement area to uh, stay warm down here. Um, and uh, you know, well, of course, you could. I would, I would add a little bit more insulation if it was up to me. But the customer finds it comfortable down here, so yay. Um, again, it operates at extremely low pressure, and um, uh, so far, except for other the issues that Afra mentioned, uh, this thing is uh, doing pretty well. So I hope that was uh, helpful and entertaining, 
And uh, please let me know in the comments below.